So I will tell you a bit about myself. I, uh, I can't say that I was born in Israel. I came when I was very, very young. My parents, they are refugees from Poland. I grew up in Israel. I joined the army. Jag blev med i det militära. I was a paratrooper uh, and then I was commanding the special group as a paratrooper. Och um, jag var fallskärmjägare och jag blev också att jag var kommandör för en fallskärm. Vad tror du? And with the time I was commanding armor uh, brigade, uh, armor division in the south. Jag var också kommandör för flera brigader i söder. And I left the army uh, as a controller in the in the Ministry of Defense. Och jag avslutade med som en tjänst i armén under eh, Försvarsdepartementet. I was commanding a lot of special operations all over the Middle East. Jag hade ansvar för en rekke specialoperationer i hela Mellanöstern. And so that to you I was awarded as a hero of the idea. Och i 73 så blev jag fick en utmärkelse som en en krigshelt från IDF. And this evening I'm coming to speak about the Jordan Valley. Yeah. Och nu i kväll ska jag snacka om Jordan Down. Because the Jordan Valley in my opinion is now on the table. För det som jag säger det så är Jordan Down det ligger på bordet nu. I'm coming to say from the early beginning that we are for peace. Man måste se från första början så att vi är för fred. And we are looking for peace. Och vi önskar oss fred. But with the time we find that we are giving up a lot, nothing happened. And I will try to explain what is going on in my opinion. In the, this is the first time which we are going to touch political issues. And I will bring just only my opinion as I see it. Om det är nu så det är min personliga uppfattning. In my eyes. I mina ögon. You can agree or you can say whatever you want. Du kan vara enig eller du kan vara uenig. The last point is that all information which I collected. Men du måste se all den information som jag har samlat. Is official uh, information. The official information. Numbers. Tallan. Which are coming from the library of the high school IDF. Och talan, det kommer från IDF, alltså det israeliska försvarets högskolan. UN figures. Och från FN. So uh, I'll try my best. So I'll try my best. With the Jordan Valley. To start with Jordan Down. To go later on and to speak a little bit about the wars which we have. Ska vi snakka lite om de olika krigen vi har haft? And later on. We will touch all the meetings for peace process until now. Ska vi snacka om de olika fredsförsöken som har varit fram till nu? We are going to start with the Jordan Valley. Men vi startar med att se på Jordan Dam. spans 90 miles long and 10 miles in width along the valley. This area includes the Jordan River, one of the most sacred places, both historically and symbolically, for Christians and Jews. Abraham, Jacob, Joshua, Elijah, Elisha, all crossed it during their lifetimes, and it is associated with some of the most important events in the Bible. When Abraham's nephew Lot was kidnapped in the war of the four kings against the five in his war against the kings of Canaan, Abraham led his 318 trained men born in his house and pursued as far as Dan through the Jordan Valley. After 40 years of wandering in the desert, the 12 tribes of Israel were led by Joshua, Moses' successor, to the promised land across the Jordan River. And the people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, 
and encamped in Gilgal, on the east border of Jericho. The prophet Elijah was sent to the Jordan Valley to choose his successor. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Avel Mecholah, you shall anoint to be prophet. And on the banks of the Jordan River, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. For Christians, the most significant event associated with the River Jordan is undoubtedly the baptismal site along the Jordan River, and even today attracts thousands of pilgrims a year. The peak of Mount Sartaba, rising over 2,300 feet above the Jordan Valley, is where the Hashmonian king Alexander Yanai built the fortress of Alexandre for his wife Shlonzion. In the time of the Second Temple, Mount Sartaba was the first of a chain of beacon stations which transmitted signals from Jerusalem to the Jews in the Babylonian diaspora, announcing the beginning of the month and religious holidays. The Jordan River today is the border of peace between Israel and Jordan. Tourists and travelers from all over the world, along with trucks carrying merchandise on a daily basis, pass through the Jordan River border terminal. But the political future of the region is at stake. Until today, Israel refrained from annexing the Jordan Valley, and the international community questions Israel's legitimacy on this part of the Promised Land. Beyond the historical and religious importance, it is crucial to understand why an Israeli recession on the Jordan Valley will risk the country's own existence. Israel is one of the few states in the world that for most of its history has been under military assault by its neighbors. In a reality of tremendous uncertainties in the Middle East, and in order to protect itself, Israel must have defensible borders. Defensible borders must include the Jordan Valley in the broader meaning of the term, as Israel's late Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin asserted one month before his assassination. If Israel were to evacuate the Jordan Valley, terrorist weaponry would flow to the hills of the West Bank that overlooks Israel's major population centers. Palestinian control of the Jordan Valley would facilitate Palestinian irredentism into Jordan and thereby undermine the future of the Hashemite Kingdom. It is a paramount Israeli interest that Jordan remains a stable buffer between Syria, Iraq, and a future Palestinian state. The people who settled the 26 Jordan Valley and North Dead Sea communities believe in the future of the region. For 40 years, these pioneers have introduced innovative and modern technological solutions in agriculture and irrigation to meet the challenges that nature's harsh climate presented, enabling the development of the region. Hard work and conviction has transformed the arid desert into fertile, productive, and vibrant communities. So, this is the Jordan Valley, and really, this is the border, the eastern border to protect Israel from the east side. It was as well. So, Jordan Dawn, they are so then in Östre Grenzen to Israel. It was as well in the time of the Second Temple. Oh, all the Tatiten, they are the other temples. We don't have any other line to protect Israel from the east side. So there is not any other line that can protect Israel against the Russians from the east. This is the only line which we know, and I am speaking as a soldier now. This is the only line that we have, and you are talking as a soldier. Which you can protect Israel from the east. This is the only line that we have from the east. This is the only line that we have from the east. This is the only line that we have from the east. Alexander Yanai, Alexander Yanai, 76 B.C. He also decides for Christus. He created a line as like now along the Jordan Valley. He created a line here, he created a line here, along the whole Jordan Valley. Against the Nabatim, which they were the Arabic at those times. Against the ones that were Arab at that time. As well now, this is the only line which is able to protect Israel from the east. This is like the only line, the only border that is, that has the ability to protect Israel. And I myself have in mind a few years ago. I remember myself, but for a few years ago. That this is going to be on the table. This is that this is going to be on the table. We decided. And we decided that. 
I mean, we decided people which were serving with me in the army. Also, folks som då tjänstgjorde tj samman med mig i det isländska hern. To do something against that. Vi bestämde oss för att göra något med detta. And we developed a project for the Jordan Valley. Vi utvecklade ett projekt för Jordan Dam. And we are carrying children, adults to the Jordan Valley as much as possible. Och då brakte vi både uh, vuxna och unga till Jordan Dam. But my story is coming. And I started from 67. Then I was coming back to Jordan Valley. Det startade nu med att säga lite om om vad som skedde 1967. Och så kommer jag tillbaka till Jordan när det var. 67. 1967. Israel is surrounded by all the Arab country. Israel är omringad av alla de dessa araber landen. I was a child. I was a little girl. I still remember. I remember fortsatt. Arab people are coming, pointing our house. Att det kommer araber att till oss och så pekar de på huset vårt. Next day it's going to be my house. Och så sa de att om några dagar så är detta mitt hus. God decided in a different way. Men Gud ville det annorlunda. And the war started 6 June. Och krigen startar 6 juni. And after two and a half days, it's a miracle. Och det som är mirakel är att det är kun två och en halv dag. On the Suez Canal. So Edna, so come to us here till Suez Canal. At the same time, på samma tid, we in the West Bank, på Västbredden, we succeeded after two and a half, three days. Det lyckades att det två och en halv till tre dagar. We took over all the West Bank, so we are coming to the Jordan. Vi tog över bort mot hela Västbredden, helt bort till Jordan. And this is a very nice story to listen how we did it, but this is not the time. Yeah, we had very little time to tell it. How did we do it? And as well, after one half day, after one and a half day, we succeeded to take over the Golan Heights. Then we took them to take over Golan Heights. And Israel became very big. And Israel became bigger. The world is shocked. The whole world was shocked. How come that such a small country? How did we become such a little land? Two and a half million in those times. We were only two and a half million men. We succeeded in five days to hit all of them and to take over. How could we manage to hit only five days to slow the whole Arab world and take these islands? No one is speaking before the war. There was no one who spoke about this before the war. Immediately after the war, but with the war being over, the UN decision. Then came FN on board. Two for two. With its resolution two four two. We have to give back all the territory which we take over. Och så att och kände då att Israel skulle leva tillbaka omlandet som vi har. And we know that it's going on and on all the time. Man vet att det pågår fortsatt. So I was sure that this is the end of the war between the Arabs. Och då trodde jag att detta här betyder slutet på stridigheten med Arabeverden. But they decided no. Men Arabeverden bestämde sig för något helt annat. Nasser in those times, he was the leader. Nasser, Nasser, I was leader for that time then. He's coming. It's written in Hebrew, but believe me, I will translate it. Same as told for Hebrew also. We three know. He came out with three names. No speaking with them. Nay, till the or sometimes with Israel. The meeting in Khartoum. That was that was in Khartoum. Then he spoke about standing strong. And so he spoke about the Arab world being strong. And then, he started, he, at least, he, he was speaking about taking over, taking back Sinai. Also, so called, must have taken back Sinai. No speaking, nothing at all. Immediately, ingen ingen möte med Israel. Sixty-eight started a new war. Nitten sextiotte startar en ny krig. Which we call it a tuition war. Det som vi kallar för utmattelseskrigen. It was a terrible war. Det var så en förfärlig krig. And the the war is going uh, in the depth. And it was on the king and Yiki in Egypt. A very complicated war. It was a very complicated war. And they started immediately to hit us along the canal. And they began immediately to shoot at us along the canal with artillery. With artillery, which we are not prepared for that. And Israel was not prepared for that. A lot of casualties. And we lost many people. And the only answer which we have in those times, the eneste svaret vi hade på den tiden, we started to hit them by air force. Vi brukte flyvåpnen våra. In depth of Egypt. Flyg dypt in i Egypt för att stoppa dem. 
as well with the same time we started to do special operation och samtidigt startade vi sån special operation around Aswan near Aswan nej Aswan to make sure that he understand that if we are making a special operation over there så att så man kunde skön att där så vi fick till special operation där it's possible to switch off the water in, in the Nile vi då kunde vi stänga av vattnet till Nil he understood it han skönte det and he stopped immediately shooting on the canal. Or shooting on that distance. And the next step was. So the next step. He invited the Russian to enter. So he invited the Egypt Russian to enter. The Russian are coming with equipment again, the Air Force, which is very powerful in Israel. Oh, oh, Russian come down with with anti-luftwaffe ships. The end of this story is coming to be. Or end of this story. I was. At those time, already in the Patrupas unit, and I was in the Nile a lot of time. For that time, there was a far shot jäger, and we were often in the Nile. And all the time, and every time, we were ordered not to touch Russian. Every time, so we could be sure that we must not touch the Russians. But at least, but at least, it was a fight between pilots, Russian pilots, and Jewish pilots. Minst det så var en fight mellan ryska flygare, alltså piloter, och israeliska piloter. And five Russian pilots fell down. Or they shot the five Russian pilots. It was the end of this war. And that was then. Case fire, end of this war. The be weapon dealer. Both side. Back in Sweden. Understood that it's going to be another war. Shunt that the end when. The back in Sweden shunt that the come to be a new war. It's a question of what about it. And we started to prepare ourselves, and they started to prepare theirs. So we went to prepare the also find prepare theirs. And we are uh, coming to the Suez Canal again. And you go back to back to the Suez Canal. After the war, we started to rebuild a line along. After the war, so built we or built a a line with strengthening. You see the the gules on the track on that. That's some strengthening that we have built. This is very uh, uh, the the ideal. The main ideology was that we are. Not as big as they are. Who we talking about? We are not so. We are not really so big or crafty as the Arabs. And we are going to protect the Suez Canal. And we should defend and protect the Suez Canal by one division. By the help of one division, which in the north we will have infantry division. So we have the infantry, infantry division, brigade, brigade. In the center we have our brigade. Or in midten had we another army. And one army brigade is in the depth. Or another one division. One division. And you can see what do they have against us? Or so can you summarize and say the strength of the relation between Israel and Egypt? Israel has about two hundred. They have two thousand two hundred. Yeah, Israel had a little over two hundred strength soldiers. Egypt had two thousand, so ten times more. Actually, they have. We have forty guns. We had fourteen cannons. Two thousand two hundred. And they had two thousand two hundred. So it was very clear from the early beginning. So it was open bar from the first beginning of. That we are going to fight against. At we slos imot one against twenty, thirty, and more. We slos en mot tjue, trente, eller førti. And to protect ourselves. Og for å beskytte oss selv. We build on the canal. Så bygde vi langs kanalen. To make it very high. Vi måtte få det så høy som mulig. To stop them from crossing the canal. For to stop the streets from them from crossing the canal. We build along the canal. So along the canal. A very sharp slope. We build a sharp, broad curve. Which is about ten meters. So it's about ten meters high. That they will not be able to cross it. So they will not be able to cross it. As well, we started to to train. Something is starting to be more trained. How to shoot with tanks. For a short distance. For that we should shoot with with tanks for a short distance. So one tank has to be here, with the second here, and we have to be there, and the other on the other side. For a very short distance, because it's very complicated with tanks. And it was very complicated to shoot with tanks for a short distance with tanks. So this doctrine was well exercised. So there was no conversion, and we are ready. Also, we are clear. Actually, so 
as well in uh, uh, in the north. So up in north, the same. Same uh, same strategy. We have strong points. But the same strategy. We have the strengthening there. On the border, along the borders. And uh, we have the same story about the forces. And we have also the same upplägg med, med de andra styrkorna. Vi har about 200 tanks, de har about 1600. Ja, vi hade 200 tanks och där hade mot fin 1600 tanks. And again we have 14 guns, they have about 1000. Vi hade 14 kanoner och de hade cirka nästan 1000. So you can understand what is the let's say the equivalent between the two sides. Så där ser man det stycke förhållande där mellan Israel och Arabeverdena eller Egypt. And uh, to be honest, for a very early, you know what is the distance between the Golan and the Suez Canal? Vet du distansen mellan Golanhöjden och Suez Kanalen? You can imagine. Hur var förstilla? 1,700 kilometers. 1,700 kilometer. And we are a very small country, and we have. Och vi är ett bitte litet land. To be ready to fight. In two lines. So we must make clear the schloss on two. Er ulike fronter. They were sure that we won't be able to win such a war. Og Arabeverden var helt overbevist om at de skulle vinne, og at Israel ikke skulle klare seg en sånn krig. It was very clear for them that if they will be ready, and they will come with a surprise, og det var helt oppmalt for dem at de skulle komme med overraskelsesangrep, we will not able, og da var ikke Israel i stand, to win the war. Til å vinne denne krigen. And I can tell you my feeling. Og jeg kan fortelle deg min følelse. I was in this time a, a commander of a company, an armor company in Sinai. På den tiden så var en kommandør nede i Sinai. You are going to fight a thousand kilometer from Tel Aviv. Vi skal også slåss tusen kilometer borte fra Tel Aviv. It's not easy. Det er ikke lett. It's not easy. Det er ikke enkelt. In the desert. Ute i ørken. The story is going on. Och historia fortsatt. Yom Kippur 73. Yom Kippur 1973. We don't know nothing at all. Vi visste ingenting. The information which we have. Information som vi hade fått. That Sadat. At Sadat is going to give a speech at six o'clock. Han skulle hålla en tal till klockan sex. You used to say, "Give him to speak." Och vi tänkte, "Okej, låt honom berätta tala." We have a feeling that something is going on. Men vi har den förelse av att ett eller annat var i färd med att ske. And Saturday morning. Så då lördags morgon. The day of the war. Krigsdagen. We started to prepare the tanks. Då började vi att förbereda tanksam. Och jag satt där borta där en gång. Pekka. Two o'clock. Klockan två. We heard a bomb. Så hörde vi en explosion. I remember the and our tanks they are standing outside. One by one, six, thirty-six tanks. Oh, oh! What is this one? The thirty-six people they stood parked by side of each other. And immediately we were attacked by MiG-21. And so immediately we were attacked by MiG-21, also a Russian jagged flight. About fifty airplanes which are coming down. Circa fifty jagged flights that came down and shot at us. You remember the story about Pearl Harbor? Who can remember the story about Pearl Harbor? The same. That that was exactly the same. The same. And we started to run as crazy to the tank. Oh, we we sprang so much all the boat to stay so long. They never hit even the one tank. But the traffic guy, the only one of our streets, won. We are lucky. It's not going to be healthy. Never. Israel, by the way, one of them, all of them, they will be banned. Had it been the Israelis, the Israelis, had they scored the trophy all together? I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. We switch all the tanks. Så vi slo på stridsvognene. And we are running to the canal. Og vi kjørte og gårde mot kanalen. Crazy, running to the canal. Vi kjørte som noe gal mot kanalen. We don't know anything, and I am running to the canal. Vi visste ikke noe annet, så vi må bare skynde oss ned mot kanalen. I was ordered, eh, I was ordered to fight, I was shot. Hva skal vi se her? In the nose, I was ready to fight, eh, eh. Hadde fått ordre om å slåss opp i nord. Eller, behind Kantara. Which is in the delta. Also, in the delta, the Alpha Delta. Actually, I was sent to fight here in Suez. So, I was sent also to the Shlosta in the Suez. So, what was the Egyptian plan? So, what was the Egyptian plan? 
Egyptian plan was very simple. Egypterna sin plan var ganska enkel. We are surprised. Tänk du huska, vi var helt överraskade. They plan to cross the canal by infantry. De planer å krysse kanalen ved hjelp av infanteri, altså soldater. Og så skulle de sende amfibiekjøretøy. Så skulle de pumpe vann ut fra Suezkanalen. Og med sterke pumpe blåse skyter seg hold gjennom kanalen. De hadde utrolig sterke pumper som pumper bort vannet. Og så skulle de åpne opp som en slags port. Og så skulle de kjøre over. Og dette hadde da Egyptian planen til å gjøre i løpet av 18 timer. Men de gjorde det aldri. De fikk aldri gjort det. Da skal jeg fortelle min historie. Jeg var befant meg der nede, der han peika med lyset. Det var klokka sju på ettermiddagen. Og kanalen brann. Og det var så mye eksplosjon at det var nesten umulig å puste. Vanskelig å puste på grunn av all røyken. Og det var veldig klart for oss hva vi måtte gjøre. Vi kjørte mot en broa der borte. Og tro meg, første kveld. De var ikke i stand til å sette opp en eneste plattform. Men den kveld mistet vi mange tanks. Fra infanteriet. Fra deres små antitanksvåpen, og langs denne kanalen, da mister vi en plass mellom 150 og 200 israelske stridsvåpen. Så Israel var i sjokk. Dette hadde aldri skjedd oss før. Og Moshe Dayan, som da var forsvarsminister, da han hørte om det her, så sa han, dette er jo som det tredje templets ødeleggelse. Men vi bestemte oss, nei, det skal ikke skje. Jeg var den regulære armeen. Reserved army is coming on 7-8 den 7. eller 8. oktober da kom også reservetroppene og to divisjoner som kom for å støtte oss. En ble kommandert av Ariel Sharon og den andre ble kommandert av en som heter Bren. Vi var veldig trøtt og sliten og vi slåss 24 timer av døgnet. Vi skjøt og skjøt og skjøt, og vi fikk ikke sove. Jeg ble såret tre ganger. Tiende oktober bestemte vi oss for å slå tilbake med to divisjoner. Det skulle skje veldig raskt. Og de var ikke forberedt. Og vi måtte lykkes. Dette var den andre tragedien etter to dager. Og vi hadde mange dødsfall av oss. Så bestemte vi oss for å ta en liten pause. Og gå fram litt roligere. Og da mellom 11 og 11. Så mellom den 11. og 13. oktober, da lyktes vi å stoppe Egypterne fra å komme inn i Sinai, bare ved hjelp av to divisjoner. Men så fattet vi en veldig alvorlig og modig avgjørelse. Og Sharon var her. Den eneste måten å hitte dem tilbake, den eneste måten vi kunne slå tilbake, det var der som vi kunne krysse Suezkanalen, og så slå dem på den andre siden. Dette var en modig avgjørelse. 
Because if we won't succeed now, for the we ikke lykkes denne gangen, it can be the end of Israel. Det, det kan også bety slutten på Israel. We know it very well as soldiers, commanders. We know what we are going to do. Vi visste det som soldater og kommandører, så visste vi hva vi måtte gjøre. And we continue fighting. Og vi fortsatte å kjempe. And we succeeded to open this. Og vi lykkes med å åpne opp en, 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 en åpning. Men vi hadde mange dødsfall. I remember that after I started 7 October, I am coming here 10 October. Etter 7 oktober, vi kommer dit den 10. oktober. Eight days, no eating, no sleeping, nothing, no fighting. Ja, det er nesten ikke veldig spist eller sove på på mange dager. The most critical time was here. Det mest kritiske tidspunktet det var akkurat der når vi skulle krysse over. Because I am coming with tank units. Jeg kommer med flere stridsvogner. One behind one. En etter en. And the canal is burning. Og kanalen brann. And we have to cross it immediately as far as possible to escape. Vi måtte krysse kanalen så fort som mulig. We did. Men vi gjorde det. And we are coming here and crossing to the second side. Når vi når vi krysser over, det kommer til andre siden. The story of a six-day war coming again. Da gentog historien sig fra seksdagerskrigen. They were surprised. Egypterne var overrasket. They saw shoes and they started to escape. De kastet fra sig skoen sine og begyndte at at lappe og springe. And we are running after them. Og vi kørte efter dem. Fighting here, like it here, fighting a little bit, but basically we are running yeah. and waiting them. Or we charge after them, or jog them. And we are coming up here. Och så kommer vi upp hit. To the Suez town. Till byen Suez. After a few days. At en ofta dag. About seventy kilometers. Cirka seventy kilometer. Running inside. In the. Taking over. The Turkey over. And then is coming an order, 22 of October. So this is another decision so, of the UN. So come a new order from 22 October from FN. 388. Clock of three. Stop immediately fighting. 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 Stop immediately to run as quickly as possible because the UN is going to stop. Och jag huskar att vi vi fick besked att vi måste börja skynda oss och kämpa så fort som möjligt för i FN önskar nu att stanna oss. I am running from here really. I was the first time which is running to Cairo. Och jag var den första som faktiskt var på väg till att köra mot i riktning Cairo. I was stopped in the kilometer one zero one. Att det jag kom till det skiftet det stod 101 kilometer till Cairo. Då blev det helikopter which landed down. Det var en helikopter som landade före mig och stoppade mig från moving in. Och stansade mig från att köra in. Then we believe no one could able to stop me. Men det var ingen som var i stand til å stanse meg, på andre måter. I'm running. I'm bare kjørt det på. And now, what happened? Men hva skjedde? We are coming and we are, they stop us. Men de stanser oss. But the situation in the field is. Men situasjonen på bakken. The third Egyptian army here. Den egyptiske tredje armé. Is surrounded totally. Den var totalt omringet. And we can finish it. Og vi kunne faktisk gjøre enda på den. We are speaking about 100,000 soldiers. Det var snakk om 100,000 egyptiske soldater som vi hadde på en måte fanget. Like that, to, 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 to hit them, to finish them in the desert. Og vi kunne gjøre slutt på den i ørken, bare helt enkelt. You don't have to fight. Vi trengte ikke engang å slåss, for de hadde ikke mat eller vann. Blocked without water, food and everything. Ja, det blokkerte dem helt uten mat og vann. You can add the air force, and you can add us, which we are, we can hit them from here. Vi kunne, ja, vi kunne slå dem på så mange måter. But we were stopped by Kissinger. Men vi ble stanset av Kissinger. And we are not allowed to touch them. Vi fikk ikke lov å røre dem. And this is the reason why they survived. Og det er derfor de overlevde. In my opinion it was a mistake. Etter min mening så var det en alvorlig feil. Because the war must be very clear. For en krig, en krig så må det være klar, sier Herre. Who is the winner? Det må være veldig klart, hvem er det som har vunnet? And he stopped us and he take from us the possibility to win. Men Kissinger stanset oss og tok fra oss den muligheten til å vinne den krigen. Because he picked it up. Fordi han tok tak i oss. That if we will win again, it's like 67. For han sa det sånn at dersom vi skulle vinne enda en gang, sånn som vi gjorde i 1967. They will never speak with us. Da vil Araberverden aldri mer snakke med oss. Because they will be ashamed again. For de vil bli skamfull på nytt igjen. So we were stopped. Så vi ble stanset. Det hadde vært enkelt for oss å helt utrydde den. Vi kunne også gå opp og stanse den andre armen også. 
120, 30, 000 soldiers. Vi om 120, kanske 130 000 soldater som vi hade på måte i vår hula hånd. We are coming in Sinai 24 of October, so kom, end of the war. Så so so 24 oktober, da var krigen slut. And this is the situation. Og dette var situasjonen. As well happened in the north. Så so, so her har du oppe i nord, altså ved, ved Golanhøyden. We succeeded to stop them. Vi lykkes med å stanse de fra Syria. And we are entering inside. Og vi gikk inn. And we are coming to the end of the war. When we are about 39 kilometers from Damascus. Og vi var så bare 39 kilometer fra Damascus. And we are about the artillery can shoot to Damascus. Og vi kunne faktisk skyte helt til Damascus med vårt artilleri. It was very clear. Og det var veldig åpenbart. To us in those times. For oss på den tiden. That this is coming to be the end of the war, the conventional war between the Jewish people and the Arabic people. At det er på måte være en på konventionell krigføring mellom Israel og Arabeverden. Because if they started, for det det var de som startet. In two lines, so far each other. Når vi startet på to fronter, så langt fra hverandre. And we are not prepared. Og vi var helt uforberedt. And we are coming to end. Og vi kom til en slutt. When we are 40 km from Damascus, 100 km from Cairo. Vi kom til punktet vi er 30 km fra Damascus og 100 km fra Cairo. Det er klart at de vil beslutte at de vil kjempe mot Israel. Det var det oppbart at de bestemte Israel at de kunne ikke slåss mer mot Israel. Det er det enden, og det var så klart for oss. Og det var så klart for oss. This is the end of the conventional war. Og dette var avslutningen av konventionell, altså alminnelig krigføring. I just want to show just only one how many casualties we have. Jeg vil vise dere litt om forholdstallet når det er dødsfall. Her står det på en bra sted. Død. 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 12, Egypt hadde 12 000 dødsfall, Syria hadde 3 000, Israel 2 222. Uh, wounded. Såre det. Egypt hadde 35 000 såre det, Syria 5 000 6, Israel 5 596. Uh, krigsfanger. Egypt. Det var 8400 egyptiske krigsfanger. Vi kunne tatt 50 000 om det så var, men vi bestemte oss. Vi orker ikke å fange flere, vi måtte jo gi dem både mat og klær, og vi orker ikke det. Syria hadde tatt 411 syriske krigsfanger. Og for Israel var det en katastrofe, 294 israelere ble tatt. Pippel i deres hendene. Så det var første gang så hadde det var piloter og det var andre typer soldater som da ikke hadde tatt. Israel er veldig sensitiv for liv. Ja, og Israel bryr seg virkelig om livet til menneskene. Og Gorda Meir, hun var redde til å gjøre hva som helst. Egypt mistet tusen stridsvogne. Og Syria mistet 1150. Israel mistet 400 stridsvogne. Når du så fra den første begynnelsen av, forholdstallet hvor mange soldater araberne hadde, og hvor mange stridsvogne de hadde, og hvor mange de hadde. Og når du da ser på antallet såret og skadde og drepte fra Israel, That is coming to be the end of the world. Det skjønte alle at det her var slutten på den type krigføring. So, if I will take, we started to count the third temple, 1882, when the first group is coming. Det vi kaller for det tredje temple, når de kom, 1882. And then it was a fight between the local people in the Galil. Det var krig mellom lokale folk i Galilea. Så uavhengighetskrigen, 47-49, Sinai-krigen, 1967-krigen, 6-dagerskrigen altså, utmattelseskrigen som vi snakket om, og Yom Kippur-krigen. Du kan skjære akkurat som en kniv, og det er der. 
conventional war der, with Israel. Der kommer en slags adgang som ikke... There is no any good reason to continue it. Altså, da skjønte araberverdenen at det var ingen hensikt å fortsette med vanlig krigføring mot Israel. Impossible to win. Det var, det var umulig for araberverdenen å vinne, og det slå Israel. Det skjønte de da etter 1973. And this is so clear at the moment, of course. It det var så clear. Those time too. Det var klart da også. I still remember when I was there, uh, I was a major already those times. Jeg husker fortsatt jeg var en major på den tiden. And we started to speak that they are going for peace. Vi begynte å snakke om fred. Sadat. Sadat. 1977. I 1977. He is coming to Israel. Han kom til Israel. And he is coming and he is telling us that kom, he is going for peace. Og fortalte oss i Israel at han ønsker nu fred med oss. He is coming to the parliament to the Knesset. Han kom til Knesset til parlamentet. We are really shocked. Og vi ble jo sjokket. This is the first time which an Arabic leader is det coming to Israel. Første gangen en arabisk leder kom til Israel. It's like what I tell you. For us, Mashaia is coming. Det var nesten som om Messias hadde kommet. They refused to speak with us. Han ville snakke med oss. And he is coming. Og han kom. It, 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 we were shocked. Vi var sjokket. Something happened. For her var det noe som skjedde. But to be careful. Some men, of us, we started to speak. Men nå var det forsiktig. Noen av oss begynte å snakke. Maybe we have to be careful. Det kan, kanskje må vi være på vakt her. Anyway, he's coming. Vi har sett han kom. A year later, etter et år, 88, oh. we have the first meeting in Camp David, for the first day, at Camp David, and they are signing agreement, peace agreement between Israel and Egypt. Signet en fredsavtale mellom Israel og Egypt. It divided for two. Den var delt i to. Sadat, he Sa is not able to leave the Palestinian problem. Sadat, han var ikke i stand til å løse det palestinske problemet. So they decided so they that during five years we will do a kind of autonomy at for the Palestinians. Palestinians could have formed a form for self-styre on the West They never spoke about what does it mean. They saw all the what it meant in practice. And the decision for Egypt is or Egypt in our eyes that we are going to withdraw totally from Sinai. The what Israel should be taken back here from Sinai. Back to the 67. Tilbake til 1967-grensen. Sina is going to be frozen area. Og Sina skulle da være demilitarisert. No forces anymore. Ingen militære styrker der. And they decided it's going to be a kind of a peace relationship between the two sides. Og det ble besluttet at det skulle bli en form for fred mellom Israel og Egypt. Turism or whatever. Med turisme og samarbeid. This agreement was signed. Denne avtalen ble signert. Det er veldig viktig å se hvor mange medlemmer i parlamentet. Det er viktig å se hvor mange i knesset som stemte for og imot. 84 som stemte for. 17 avoided. Og 17 som unnlot å stemme. 13 var against. Og 13 som stemte imot. For meg var det at by preparing the the data I I was shocked because I must see I was shocked at the shadow. The commander for uh, the Palmach, which was the, the main important structure uh, of the independence war. For it's one of the one commander that was very important in the independence war. Igal alone. Igal alone. He grew up in Israel. He grew up in Israel. He avoided. He didn't want to stand. And if he avoided, if he had in mind that this is not so true, we have to be careful. That shows that we must be careful. I never paid attention before uh, preparing it. He he avoided. I didn't think about it before, also, but he didn't want to say something. Now, I am very sorry that you are not able to read uh, Hebrew because we have a lot. Of I'm very sorry that you cannot read Hebrew because we have very many interesting Hebrewish documents. Very interesting articles about this peace. Many interesting articles about this peace. People are writing what they remember. Folk som nu skriver vad de huskar från den tiden. Chief of intelligence. Also, leader for the attorney. He wrote now an article forty years later. He wrote an article forty years later. I am not surprised. Or I am not overwhelmed. From the early beginning, I knew. From the first beginning, so what will happen? What did will happen? What happened? So 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 what happened? 
Not between nations. Ikke mellom nasjoner. Not between nations. For us it's very important between nations. Ja, det er viktig for meg. Det var ikke en fred mellom nasjoner, men mellom lederne. But the peace was just only between leaders. Som sagt, det var en fred mellom lederne. To be honest with you, og for å være helt ærlig, I was serving the army in those times. Jeg tjenestegjorde jo i armen på den tiden. I was sure. Og jeg var sikker på at det systemet at systemet med å gi bort land for fred jeg kjøper fred ved å gi bort land etter 40 år er det veldig åpenbart at det fungerer ikke det fungerer ikke jeg har ikke Sinai og har heller ikke fred og enda verre i disse fredsavtalene så er det snakk om å gå tilbake til 67-grensen som er en altfor dårlig grense. Og vi har sagt mange ganger i Israel at Israel kan aldri gå tilbake til 67-grensen. Og vi ødelager våre egne israelske landsbyer i Sinai. Og vi ødelager Sharmeshek og vi takk oss ut fra Sharm el-Sheikh. Vi ga fra oss Sharm el-Sheikh. Og Yamit, en fantastisk by som vi bygde opp. Og det var første gangen at den sionistiske bevegelsen ødelegg sine egne byer. Dette var en katastrofe. Men vi er ready til å pay det. Men vi er villige til å betale for fred. Og for øyeblikket. Så Sinai, hva er det? Hva skjer det? Det jeg vet som skjer i Sinai nu, det er helt forferdelig. Den internasjonale jihadbevegelsen holder til nu i Sinai. Hvis noen skulle fortelle meg, for 30 år siden, at beduiner av dem skulle være en islamiststyrke, så hadde jeg kommet til å flyte og sagt at det kan ikke skje, men nå skjer det. Og problemet for oss, selv om vi skulle vite i morgen at de vil skyte raketter, fra Sinai til Eilat, for eksempel. Så kan ikke vi gjøre noe som helst. Fordi vi har tross alt en fredsavtale mellom Israel og Egypt. Så vi har en kald fred. Men vi har til at at Egypt kan komme inn med vepn og styrke. Inn i Sinai. Og det skulle egentlig være en demilitarisert zone. Men det er ikke lenger demilitarisert. Det er masse militære styrker fra Egypt inne i Sinai nå. Så jeg spør meg selv, etter 40 år, hva er det vi har fått nå? Det er ikke bare jeg som spør. Og Egypt er et veldig problematisk land nå for øyeblikket. Og vi støtter jo også Egypt, fordi det er jo en kamp i Egypt mellom to sider, mellom herren og det muslimske brorskapet. Så dette som skjedde nå, på den siden. Men du fortsetter. Og vi går inn, Hvem er palestiner? Hva betyr det å være palestiner? Dette er tall fra FN noen år gammel. Mer enn en million av dem bor på Gaza-stripa. Og da er de flyktninger. Cirka en og en halv million som innbyggere på Vestbank. Men de fleste der er ikke flyktninger. Mange av de palestinerne der, de bor i helt ordinære hus som de har bodd i hele tiden. Så det er stor forskjell på palestinerne i Gaza og palestinerne på Vestbredden. Og to og en halv million av palestinerne bor i Jordan. Og to og en halv million av palestinerne bor i Jordan. 250 000 i Libanon, 
in Syria's world. O Syria lieke man ja. And I am not speaking about those which are living in Europe all over the world. Ik snak ik om alle die som bor andre plasser i Europa no, eller i andre arabiske land. Palestinian in Israel. Og så bor det også mange palestinere inne i Israel. So who represent them? So hvem representerer palestinerne? Who is the one which can speak for all? Hvem er den som person som kan være en talsmann for palestinerne? We decide. Vi som bestemte, Israel bestemte, et rabbin bestemte at det var PLO som skulle være talsrøre for palestinerne. Dette var med i Oslo-avtalen. Hvis jeg skulle sammenligne de to sidene, økonomi, which is very important because I am going to do a kind of a peace with the second side and I must have some kind of economy which is equal. If I have a fight with the other side, it must be a peace for the economic equality. So in Jordan, so in Jordan, income for per person, which is for the UN numbers 96. Also, I found in the tall from 1996, they said that in Jordan, they had a per person 2,000 dollars in income. Maybe now it's a little bit more or less because in Jordan now they have a problem of about two and a half, maybe more refugees. And you have a problem, Jordan, for you have a couple of two and a half million refugees from Syria. And the income in the Palestinian is today less than one thousand six hundred per year. Yeah, per year, and in the day, less than one thousand six hundred dollars per year. In the West Bank, they have about seven thousand factories, which just only one hundred are in a level. Which you can say factory. Ja, du kan si det var 7000 fabrikker opprinnelig på Vestbredden, men det var knapt 100 nå som er fungerende. The government is putting money per person, 1000 dollars in Israel. Og myndighetene gir kanskje 1000 dollar. Ja, Israel gir 1000 dollar per innbygger i Palestina, de er 15 dollar. So there is no any equivalent between the two sides. Så det er ingen likevekt. Very different. Anyway, we are going and we try to do it. Vi forsøkte nå ikke vennes. Men i 1987, Shimon Peros, da han var utenriksminister, så dro han til London og møtte kong Hussein fra Jordan. And they agreed. Or they were any. They signed the pact. Jordan. Will take Jordan. Responsibility to the West Bank. That Jordan should take ownership for West Bank. And we will open a corridor between West Bank to Jordan. And we will open a corridor between West Bank and Jordan. In my opinion, it was a very good agreement. Or at the min mening, it was a good agreement. But we haven't succeeded. But we didn't succeed. It fell down. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. And we are going further. So for that thing, the world is pushing us. But what can press us to to the Madrid option? So fit with our Madrid conference in 1991. 91. Prime Minister Itzhak Shamir. So Itzhak Shamir is meeting Abi. Og møtte arabiske ledere til en fredsavtale. Og avgjørelsen var at vi skulle snakke med Syria på en måte, Jordan med en på en annen måte, og palestinerne skulle bli representert av Jordan. Ikke PLO, ingen andre. Denne konferansen varte noen få dager. And the decision is coming to be that after this conference we have agreement with Jordan 94. Oh, then the conference led to that we got a peace agreement with Jordan in 1994. Nothing happened over there, but from here we are going to Oslo. Yeah, and that is why we are going to Oslo of Tarn. This was the open gate to come to this town. This was the most important thing to Oslo of Tarn. What happened then? Oh, what happened then? Ninety 
Etter Madrid-konferansen i 1991 så var det valg i Israel. Og i 1992 ble Rabin valgt. Og Rabin lovte at han skulle skaffe fred. Både med Syria og også med palestinerne. He is going to Washington to to meeting the Arabic side. So he drew off to Washington for a meeting with the Arab Sia. Anything shut down. The meeting which was they started to meet each other. They started to meet each other. Deputy of Minister for Affairs here with. Yeah, Vice Utrecht Minister. The guy which is called Abu Mazen. Han som vi kallar för Abu Mazen. Which is now in power. Han som nu är alltså Abbas. Original name. Mahmoud Abbas. And they started to sign an agreement, and I will point it now. What mean this agreement? Or the signed an agreement, and I will tell you what an agreement means. Do you know this picture? Do you see this picture here? You know why he is standing in in the middle? Do you know why Bill Clinton is standing in the middle? Really? Do you know that? Who can imagine why? Can you imagine why he is standing in the middle? The story is that he is standing in the middle. Han stod i mitten. Yasser Arafat used to kiss each one. For Yasser Arafat, han brukade att kyssa båda. To prevent kissing Rabin. Så för att undgå att han skulle kyssa Rabin. He is standing in the middle. Så placerade sig i mitten. Yeah, really. This is the real story. Det är sant. He is standing in the middle to prevent kissing him. Han stod i mitten för att undgå att Arafat skulle kyssa Rabin. So. What happened there? So what happened there? Rabbi. Rabbi. Agreed. Rabbi agreed. I have the question: Who is the Palestinian? Who is representing them? This point is that when a Palestinian man is going to sit here, men how? PLO skulle ta ansvaret for å representere palestinerne over hele verden. Og dette var faktisk Israel som bestemte seg for. Israel bestemte seg for at PLO skulle være fransk. Helt fram til dette punktet så har Israel nektet å anerkjenne PLO. Men fra dette øyeblikket så anerkjente Israel PLO. And Yasser Arafat in this case, or Yasser Arafat, promised all of the all the hat that he is going to leave terror. He loved that he was going to end the terror. He will be the leader which will make peace. And that he will have freedom in Israel. That he is going to recognize Israel. That he will recognize Israel. All of it never happened. But there is nothing that this happened. Never happened. It did not. But he. He became the leader of the Palestinian. Men han ble leder, han ble palestinens leder. Og vi i Israel ga Arafat utrolig mye makt. Tabben, sånn som jeg ser det, er at vi så Israel, fra første stund så tenkte Israel, hvordan kan vi komme forbi disse hindringene? Så Israel på en måte hoppet bok over hindringene. Vi bypasser det. Så når det oppstår problemer, så bare hopper vi bok over det. It means that if the question of refugees is very hard, så hvis hvis flygtningsspørgsmålet for eksempel er vanskeligt, leave it and we will discuss it later. Ja, bare bare læg det spørgsmål bort, så diskuterer vi det senere. If Jerusalem is very hard, hvis Jerusalem spørgsmålet er alvorligt, leave it, we will discuss it later. Vi glemmer det, vi diskuterer det andre gang. If recognizing Israel is very hard for them, hvis det er vanskeligt for dem at anerkende Israel, ja, vi kan snakke om det senere. And we gave a lot. So Israel gave us a lot, and we didn't get anything back. They, at this moment, decided they would see the end. Palestine, they decided that they had a clear goal. They knew exactly what do they want. They knew exactly what they wanted. And they never gave up. And they never gave up. Never. Never. Until today. Helt fram till denna dag. They want just only to have. They will only have. And what they promised here. Och det de har lovat oss här. Ingenting av detta har skett. I was serving the army those days. I chanced to be in hand for the Tiara. You know that Arafat became the leader of Gaza Strip as well. But Arafat was also leader for Gaza Strip up until then. And he used to go from Ramallah to Gaza Strip. And he raced often between Ramallah and Gaza. And he used to carry in his car. On shorty beams in automatic guns. Or in beams in, so he had an automatic weapon. 
We know it. Vi vet det. But we decided not to make him ashamed. Men vi bestämde oss för att inte skämma honom ut. So he never, never had in mind to 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 to. Så var det för han hade aldrig nå nå tanke om att han skulle uppfylla dessa löften. Anyway. Men lite väl. The agreement was signed in Washington. Avtalet blev signerat i Washington. And then this is called the first Oslo Agreement. Och det är det kallt för Oslo 1. Which means, om det är that we we ready to make a kind of autonomy in the West Bank. Vi tror att Israel var villig till att ge Palestina en form för självstyre på Västbredden. And after five years, och efter fem år. We will find the last solution for this area. Då skulle vi komma till en endelig lösning, en endelig avslutning av det det problemet. Never discussed in 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 details what is going to. Men vi har aldrig diskuterat i detalj hur det ska bli. But again, it's coming five years from Camp David. Men på samma måte fem år efter Camp David. And at the end, we will discuss how it will be. Och till slut skulle vi finna ut, skulle vi lösa hur det skulle göras. Anyway. Men inte väl. The agreement was signed and you saw the picture. Det signerat och vi såg bilden. At 1995 we have the second Oslo agreement. Då hade vi det som kallades för Oslo 2. Which was signed by Rabin. Av Rabin. Det var september 1995. In this agreement we agreed. I denna avtal så gick Israel med på. To wisdom from 450 villages and towns in the West Bank. Och trakt sig ut från 450 landsbyar på Västbredden. And then we decided as well. Och därte bestämde oss i Israel så för. Which is, in my opinion, is a disaster. Och i att det minns inte så det här är en katastrof för att Israel nu bestämde sig för. To divide the West Bank to three sectors. Israel bestämde sig för att dela Västbredden i tre sektorer A, B och C. A, B, C. A, B och C. Please ask me what is A at the moment. Where is A for you? I don't know. I can't even get there. Where is the border between A and B? Where is the border between A and B? Where is the border between B and C? And where is the border between B and C? I don't know. It's difficult to say. And the last time, just only I. I'm traveling there a lot. Det är väldigt vanskt att se nu. I went to to the the Wadi Kelt, which is coming from Jerusalem to Jericho. I went. I tried to go there, but I'm Jewish, so I'm not going. There is a Orthodox church in the in in the in the in the in the valley. Then Orthodox church. They never decided how come this. They have never decided. Where does the difference lie between the civil and the military? Area C. Area C. Security and municipality for the villages. There is both. There is both the civil and military makt i Israel. Tax and other problems they have. But tax and other things they have to do with Palestine. Very strange. They're very mercenary. Because in those times I was out of the army anyway. But for instance, that I was far from the army. Agreement must be black and white, especially with the Arab. This belongs to you. In Australia, it must be black and white. This is the border. In Australia, it must be black and white. It must be black and white. It must be clear. Here is the border. Yes or no? At the moment, in the West Bank, we have area A, area B. For the moment, we have only area A, B, and C. Believe me, if I am driving down a car from my house to the, to the Jordan Valley, it's actually if he he be from my house near to Jordan Valley, I will have an accident with an Arabic car which is coming in front. Also for a ulike with with an Arabic car. What is the law? What? Which law is there? And he is living in area A. He is living in area A. I am living in Israel. Oh, he is living in Israel. There is no law. But there is no clarity there. How we carry? Don't ask me. How do we lose that? This is all. Anyway, 90, uh, 90, uh, November 1995. So in November 1995, uh, Rabin was murdered. I am very sorry. Rabin for Israel. Israel. He was murdered, and then of course, those which are for this agreement, they will say that we'll never. Are able to finish it because he was murdered. Yeah. Oh, many of them, the others who were for Oslo, they mean that he didn't have fulfilled it since he was murdered. And at the moment in the discussion, he was able to finish it. Or not? And the question was, was he really in a position to fulfill this agreement? I don't want to touch it anymore. That will not come in. But later on, but later on. 
Immediately terror is coming. Da kommer det terror umiddelbart. So please. Så vær så snill. If you are not sure, don't go to discussion. Hvis du ikke er sikker, så ikke start en sånn diskusjon en gang. Because this is a danger. Fordi dette er farlig. If you won't succeed in meeting. Hvis du ikke lykkes i møte. You will have immediately terror. Da får du umiddelbart terror tilbake. And by by doing that. Og ved å gjøre dette. We have 202, the second. Da fikk vi i år 2002 det som vi kaller for den andre intifadaen. Den andre intifadaen kom umiddelbart etter forhandlingen brøt sammen. Det var i begynnelsen av 2002. Og det var helt forferdelig. Du kunne ikke engang gå gatelangs i Israel. Det var forfarlig. Du kunne ikke ta en buss. Each moment you are sure that something will happen. For in that every second there is change. Twenty-seven March two thousand two. Twenty-seven March two thousand two. Passer the Jewish passer in. In the Jewish Pesach feeling. In Natania. In Natania. A bomb. A suicide. For the Salmos bomb. A suicide. In Park Hotel or draw thread the sticker. In this month in March. Or bare i mars måned alene. We have one hundred and five civilians in Israel. Så var det altså elve terrorangrep og 105 sivile israelere som ble drept. Bare på en måned. Og dette kom etter Oslo-avtalen. It was impossible to continue. Det var umulig, det kunne umulig fortsette. Sharon is coming in power. Og da fikk, da ble Sharon valgt. In 1929. 29 mars. 29 mars. Two days after that. Two days after that. We opened this. Da startet vi. Det vi kaller for operasjon forsvarsskjold. We decided to go in. Så da gikk Israel inn i Ramallah. Even though we have the Oslo agreement. Selv om vi hadde Oslo-avtalen. We surrounded Arafat's house. We entered to six towns. We came in 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 six towns. Where we are here, I said, on the on the direct, on the direct line. Two zeros and a null. No two. So terror is crafted there after this operation here. What does it mean? What does it mean? In the Middle East, in Middle East, power is very important. It's very important with power. What can I do? What can I do? You can see it here. What happened? What happened? Speaking, signing power is very important. Det er, altså makt er utrolig viktig. And from here, og fra her, here, you can see how the door is going down. Se hvordan terroren gikk ned. We break it open. And we close with a line. The West Bank, which is the sikkerhet... impossible at the moment ja, to go så... free inside. Som gjør at det er umulig for palestinere å komme inn uten kontroll. So this is coming to be after... Uh, after the Oslo Agreement. So that was also after Oslo Accord. And then we are coming with this Prime Minister Sharon. So Sharon. And all of it is surrounded and connected to peace. How to find peace? And he decided after this operation. Yeah, after the operation, so thought that Sharon, what can he do to find peace? To take off. Without any agreement. Och då beslutar Sharon ut någon avtal. Gaza Strip. Och tracks att Israel ska tracka helt ut av Gaza Strip. Why he did it? Varför gjorde han det? What is the reason? Mind. Vad var vad var det som var tanken till Arik Sharon då? No one can explain because after that he passed away. Ingen kan kan förklara det för han gick in i koma och ja han dödade nyligen. What was this? Vad var det för något? After 67, after 1967, we decided. That was not the we. To build up. That we should build up. Bridges inside between Gaza and Rafah. We built up landspia between Gaza and Rafah. 
Og vi sendte våre beste mennesker for å bo der. Og det gjorde vi. Vi bygde 22 landsbyer i Gaza. 8600 jøder som bodde der. Og 3500 barn under 14 år. Men Sharon bestemte for at alt skulle fjernes. Alle skulle fjernes uten en avtale. Og vi gjorde det. Og hva fikk vi tilbake? Raketter mot Ashkelon, Ashdod. Nå bor det ikke en eneste jøde inni der lenger. Dette området var som et paradis. Det kan være som Singapore. Nydelig sted der. Og landbruk var fantastisk der. Du kunne gjøre hva du vil der. Liv til alle. Hvis du bare legger ned terror. Men Hamas er der. Og terror. Og helt fra første stund der skjønte at vi skulle trekke oss ut. Da skjønte jeg at vi kom til å få terror tilbake. Og det er det som er nå i dagens situasjon. Og de flyktningene som er der, de har ingen forbindelse med de som bor på Vestbredden. Så denne Abu Masen, altså Abbas, som nå taler, han er ikke leder i Gaza. Han er ikke leder for Palestina i Libanon heller, eller Syria, eller Jordan. Men hva skjedde? Det er ikke pliktet før og etterpå. Her er landsbyer i Gaza, før uttrekkingen og etterpå. Vi viser et annet bilde. Disse bildene vil vi ikke se igjen. Israel Israel skal aldri mer få oppleve at IDF, altså israelske soldater, går inn og fjerner israelske innbyggere. For nå skal jeg straks gå over til å snakke om Jordandal. Det er her forferdelige bilder. Altså, jødiske mennesker. Jøder som på en måte slåss mot hverandre her. Herren kommer. Og Israel vil ikke ønske å se dette på nytt igjen. Vi vil ikke se dette her. Og jeg er overbevist om at dette her var siste gangen israelske armeen var med på sånne ting. For å sende inn israelske soldater for å hente ut jødene. Det kan ikke skje for det gangen. Det får ikke skje for det gangen. Og mer enn dette, de som vi tok ut fra husene sine, helt fram til nå, denne dag, det er mange av dem som fortsatt enda ikke har fått fullt oppgjør, eller blitt kompensert enda. Og hva vi får tilbake? Terror. Jordan Valley. Jordan Valley. No, before Jordan Valley, I want to. I mean, we saw the TV the first time we go to Jordan. Now, Ehud Olmert replaced Sharon. Ehud Olmert took over after Sharon. We know that he had thirty nice meetings. Then he had thirty nine meetings with Abbas. He promised him. He loved him. Ninety-three percent from the West Bank. Han tilbyrde 93 prosent av Vestbredden, pluss 5,3 prosent av området som lå der innenfor den grønne linja, altså av Israel. Nesten 100 prosent. Han diskuterte dette med Abbas. Og Abbas sa at han måtte gå og diskutere dette med sine folk. 
he went and he drove this map. Han tegnet dette kartet som dere ser. this discussion. I henhold til disse diskusjonene. At least he refused. Men likevel så nekta han. He got 100% and he Han fikk omtrent 100% av Vestbred, men takket likevel nei. And this is the story at the moment. Og dette er situasjonen for øyeblikket. He don't want to declare that Israel is the state for the Jews. For Abbas nekta å anerkjenne at Israel er jødenes stat. He don't want to touch Jerusalem. Han vil ikke, han vil ikke røre Jerusalem spørsmålet. He don't want to touch the problem of refugees. Og han vil ikke løse problemet med flyktningene. But of course he won this area. Men han vil ha dette området. And the question is why shall I pay? Og spørsmålet er hvorfor skal vi betale? The Jordan Valley. Så over til Jordan da. Jordan Valley, you can see it here. So you said that is the only border for the east. Den eneste grensen mot øst. In the Jordan Valley, or in Jordan Dal. Again, you can see. So that how many people are living over there? So how many people are living over there? The two, two, two lands beyond. About six thousand people. Yeah, that's in six thousand men. It's going to be dark. The Jordan Valley is paradise. Jordan Dal and this is paradise. It's really paradise. Then some paradise. We are doing well agriculture. We are very proud of landbruk. I will show you the pictures. And we start build us now. It was a desert. There was an ocean. It was really a desert. There was a ocean. The first ocean. Anything is there. The Jordan Valley is now on the table. But now we are also Jordan Dal on the table. The discussion is not anymore to take them away. The discussion is not to ban them. And I explain why. I can show you again pictures. So for the same thing, cooperation between international forces. We must talk. We must talk about cooperation with international forces. Cooperation between the Arabic people. Cooperation between the Arabic people. And those which want to stay to live there, leave them. All these who want to flee, they can flee. But in the same time. But at the same time. They are not allowed anymore at the moment to send product to Europe. So, so for the kilo of sand, sell these products that are being produced there. They are not allowed to do that, and they are not allowed to do that. For the kilo of the end, for the kilo of the end. It means that slowly, slowly. 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 It means that Nearby Jericho. It's not going to be an international free plus near Jericho. And then to sue out all those people which they they build up their houses for. Also, young boot down fairly some some have big up a plant alive. And I am coming to ask why. I come from Spain. Why for? Why to do that? Why for? Can we do that? Why we have to leave this border? Why for? Can we forget that that border? Anyway. You want to? Israel must be a part of the international community. Israel wants to, regardless of being a part of the international community, and the international community, the international community, especially Europe, especially Europe, and now Obama as well, and some is also Obama pushing us. Obama also pushes us. Om dette området. And they want us to leave the Jordan Valley. Og de ønsker at Israel skal fjerne seg fra Jordan Dal. And I am coming to ask you after all this speech. What we have to do? Do we want to be a part of the international community? Do we want to be a part of the international community? Do we want to be a part of the international community? Do we want to have peace? Do we want to have peace? But we are paying for nothing. 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 So we won't be a part of the international community. The folk in Europe is coming to say, "Hey, gentlemen, the see Europa, hey, the West Bank is in terrible situation. That's what they're talking about. You must leave it. They're coming for loud then. And the question is why? Why do we have to leave it? Also, the question is why should we be loud then? So, I just only want to 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 point the last point. The last point is for you. The Jewish nation, the Jewish nation, 
is a very uh, ancient. Du er en gammel, en gammel nation. And okay. If I'm coming to call the Jewish nation, we know that uh, that Joshua. Vi vet at Joshua entered to uh, the Holy Land. Han gikk inn i det lovende landet. Cirka 1200 før Kristus. The, of, the, the beginning of the Iron Season, it means 1200 years BC. Ja, cirka 1200 før Kristus. Something like that. Omtrent da, i det første templet. And we know exactly that the first temple Og vet at det første templet was until 5800 years. Then we have independence 400 something was destroyed the Big rebellion against Rome, 66 to 70. mot Rom, det var mellan 66 och 70. Titus destroyed the temple. Och Titus ödelade templet. 73 Masada failed. Och 73 då falt det eller år 73 falt Masada. But still in this time, after the the, the, the temple was destroyed. Men efter templet var ödelagt. In Judah and in the Galil, but the Jews, most of the people, the Jewish people, live in over there. The most Jews lived there. 132 AC. Or in 132 after Christus. Bar Kochba rebellion. So, shall we say Bar Kochba uprøre? No one can explain why he did it, but we are going to exile. Yeah, we eat it. And Judah was destroyed totally. And Judah was full stand the other night. And we are going to the out of this area for 180 so 1847 so years it means the between that the jewish nation is very ancient at the jewish nation a gammal but actually we are about 2000 years without so our we, country so we went on to 2000 years without our own land we started to build the second, the third temple, 82. Yeah, the we call it the third temple, been to be May 82. And we are now just only the third temple, 66 years. And we have now had 66 years with independence from 1948 till today. Gentlemen, for us, so for us, we remember this. We know this. And we know. We know. For us, one mistake. And one mistake. And our history is known. Nu så vi känner historien. We are not allowed to do even though one mistake. Vi kan inte tillåta oss en enaste fel till. Vi kan inte tappa. Our big people they can make a lot of mistakes. Alla blanda, de kan göra många fel. Det vet vi. We are not allowed to do even though one mistake. Men vi kan inte tillåta. We will do one mistake. Vi kan inte tillåta oss för det där som vi gör en enaste fel. Då är det en. And I don't want to be again without a country. Och ens jag var en dag gång utan land. So the question is what to do. So first of all, what are we going to do? Gentlemen, I will show you the pictures of the Jordan Valley. I will show you the pictures of the Jordan Valley. I will show you the pictures of the Jordan Valley. Then I will ask you. Stop. Uh, just only to show again. This is the beginning of the Jordan Valley. Som så ut Jordan Valley först. Nothing at all. Ingenting bara öken. Nothing. This is the Prime Minister. Which was in those times, maybe Eskol. Here is Eskol. So stood there. In the Jordan Valley, here is standing. That's what Eskol. It was empty. It was a desert. But tomb. There was Urken. And here we are coming to see what is going today. This is the river. This this is today. So it's a little different. There is a difference between the two. Then for sure, man. Pictures. And they want. Oh, that they will Arab. Because it's very easy to take them off. Six thousand. Det är rätt och fjärn. Det är bara riktigt av 6000 jöda som bor där. It's like in the Gaza Strip. Det är inte lika lätt som i Gaza. And this is now on the. Och det är lika som nu på bordet. John Kerry. Obama och John Kerry. De snakkar om Jordan då. De snakkar om Jordan då. And we are afraid. Och vi är rädd. Somebody will take the decision, make again a mistake. Och vi är rädd för att någon ska ta fatta en gal avgörelse. 
And I myself am doing whatever I can do. Why you this project which we decided to do? With this project, they should help me. Help them as much as possible. Oh, help! I beg you, how soon as possible. And I will show pictures from this project. I will show you some pictures from this project. Oh, it's going now. So we show pictures from the Jordan Valley at the moment. And see, this is my friend, which you know you are living in this Yeah, really, the best people which they were serving the is part of it. We send them here. And you can see the monument over there. So it's a monument of a fund. And this is the Jordan Valley at the moment. And believe me, I am coming and telling you the truth. This is now on the table. This Obama is trying to do whatever is possible to push power out of this area. And let's pray that he won't be successful. So let's pray that he won't be successful. Who can help us? So when can help us? God. Problems in Europe with Putin. Problems in Europe with Putin. And he will focus his power to to Europe. Han will focus his problems. And the question which I am asking, really. The question which I still am. Why are they doing that? Why are they doing that? At the moment, all around is burning. For the whole world around is all burning. Egypt is burning. Egypt is on the flame. You want to do peace? Go to Syria. If you want to have peace, you go to Syria. All the stable places is there. But the only stable place there is Israel. Don't touch it. So you can't do it. Don't touch it. But now he's pushing us. But he's pushing us. And they want the Jordan Valley. They will have Jordan Valley. Really, really, really. I, I, the last story which I'm going to tell you. And we. Three weeks ago, I was in the Jordan Valley. For three weeks in Val, I Jordan down. And the mayor of Jericho met me. Or Ulfer and Jericho met them. And we know quite each other. Or we met. We met one day over there. What are you doing here? What's the point of this place? Why are you here? Why are you staying for late? Oh no, that. I will shoot that. I'm going to shoot you. As I'm a passport, I'm going to shoot that. It happened. They have in mind that we are going to leave this place. They have the sign that we are going to leave. The mood is over there. I don't want to believe that we won't do that. Men är väl tror att vi inte ska flytta. For what? For nothing. Hur får det? För ingenting. And I am coming here if you can help us. Jag kommer hit om du kan hjälpa oss. By speaking, by writing, by going and doing whatever is possible for you. Vi gör det som är möjligt för dig att göra. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Tack så mycket.